Okay, here's the tea of the day. I've got my layers here. On the bottom, you can see by color density, uh, lighter brownish green, that's uh, uh, San Mateo Buen Yerba Mate, uh, non-smoked, which means uh, don't have to worry about uh, wood treatment. Uh, oftentimes they'll burn pallets and stuff that's been chemical wood that's been chemically treated to dry the yerba mate. So you want to make sure you get the unsmoked. And then on top of that, I've got a three green blend of 50% stinging nettles, 25% thyme, and roughly 25% oregano. And then the top there, I have lavender flower. And um, that's got a calming effect, um, sort of like a mild sedative calming effect. So you've got your energizer there with the yerba mate, and you've got your calming um, uh, herb in there as well. You could add other calming herbs. I don't know which other ones would work. Maybe if you had some St. John's Ward or something like that. But um, uh, this green blend here is very in the middle is really nutritive for the skeletal system um, okay so that's the tea of the day uh, heard David Wolf talk about uh, the speedball effect uh, when you do herbs is sort of like you want to have uh, to balance you want to have the energizer and the uh, relaxer uh, together yeah, that not always but that's ideal usually okay okay here's sort of where I would pull the water to make a tea it's probably gone a little bit beyond not yet when boiling rapidly so I'm just gonna slide off the burner and I'm gonna let that rest for probably two minutes two to three minutes to let the to it till the to, till the bubbling finally start stops and um, till it gets a chance to cool a little bit because I don't want to damage anything. You want it hot, but you don't want it this hot. I actually was a little late pulling this off of there. Um, I can actually touch it. It's it's kind of hot. It's not. It's, that was just a quick hit, but um, just needs to be a little bit cooler than that. And so I'll check back. Okay, it's been about uh, two or three minutes, uh, so the water still still it's got some steam coming off of it but it's cooled down significantly so um, I'm gonna go ahead and pour it into the let's call this the speed ball tea of the day and uh, what I'm gonna do here oftentimes I'll sort of put my head over this and breathe in when I got lavender in there sort of like for an aromatherapy effect uh, I really love the smell of lavender. It's a very unique. Very nice uh, aromatic smell. Alright, so what I usually do after that, I take a this uh, bamboo skewer. I uh, got a whole pack of them, but and then I'll just stir this up to get all the tea ingredients uh, uh, in into the water. This is a this is gonna be a concentrate sorta. Of where I'm gonna make it beginning to end, but then when I get ready to pour and drink it, I'll pour like, for example, maybe a, a third or a half of this into my drinking vessel, and then I'll add uh, room temperature water or spring water or you know cool water, whatever you wanna do. So this will, this will make but I'm going to blend it. I'm going to blend this once it gets through steeping and I strain it. I'm going to, and it cools down a little bit. I'm going to blend this with some diced ginger and some cut up whole lemon in a high speed, high speed blender. And then um, that's probably going to almost fill the jar up and then add any cool water and then let that fully cool. And then that'll be my concentrate. And I'll probably get about four, three to four jars out of this, three to four quarts. I'll, I'll pretty much double this by adding to water. I mean, that's something you can do to stretch something out. You make it strong so you can have it throughout the day. And so I'll let this continue to steep 
I'm going to let this steep for probably 20 minutes and then uh, I'll, I'll check back. Okay, we're about a couple minutes in to the steeping, uh, so we've got about 18 minutes to go. But what I'm going to do here is I've got some Sole salt. Uh, that's my master batch, and I've poured off here, so that's the full pure Sole salt. It just doesn't have any rocks in the bottom because uh, it, it's back basically produced from this batch here. And you can see how much those, oh, I've made a couple of videos showing about this. But those those just those just melt as you add more water. But but when the water reaches 26% saline, the rocks stop melting, and um, the equilibrium is reached. So this is the 26% saline solution here. It's basically the liquid you see here. I just poured it off here. Then I add more spring water, and then it, it brings itself back up within 24 hours to that 26%. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm going to add two full droppers full of the sole salt right to the T and you probably could add more because this is a concentrate but I, I might add more once the blending and the with the ginger and lemons over with but um, what this is going to do now I'm going to stir it up again to uh, make sure that all of the uh, salt is dispersed and into the water part of it and what that's what the the the, the uh, silly salt is highly alkaline and so it's going to um assist with the leaching of all the constituents in, in each one of these herb ingredients so it's going to it's going to you know draw out more a little more than it would be if it, than, than if it was plain water so it's just going to assist you're going to get more from the uh making the tea. It's going to draw out a little bit more. Um, plus that salt is, is nice minerals there so it's going to help structure the water but the tea itself is all the minerals in there are going to help structure the water. Okay um, we'll check back with you later after the steeping's done. Okay still a while to go on the steeping before the next step. Um, I'm going to in the, while that's doing I'm going to start uh, peeling and dicing up this ginger uh, and then I'm going to wash these lemons and then uh, sort of cut the ends off and prep them and cut them up uh, because these these will be blended with, and I'll show you that what, what it looks like when I'm done and then because that that's going to be blended with the strain tea uh, in a high speed blender.
Okay, the timing has elapsed for the 20 minute um, initial steeping process for the tea here. It's still uh, quite quite warm, very warm uh, to hot. If I kept my hand on there, it's sort of like not really burn, but just a little bit of some, you know, a little bit of unpleasantness. It's it's kind of really warm. All right, so at this point. It's been steeping 20 minutes. And I've stirred it up and I've added two uh, dropperfuls of the sole salt. So what I'm going to hear and do now is I'm going to start to cool it down. But before I do that, I'm just going to add an additional dropperful of sole salt. At this point, I sort of like to split it up there. And then now I'm going to add some more spring water. Not all the way full, but just near the top there. And so basically what that's going to do is it's going to start cooling it off. And um, I'm going to stir that again to the Vamu uh, skewer. And that additional dropper of salt is going to continue just to leach as it continues to cool down. Okay, and I'm going to let that steep. Um, the glass is still warm from the conductivity, but you can tell it's 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 cooled down significantly, um, and it'll it'll cool down. So I'm going to set the timer again for 20 minutes, and then I'll, I'll check back with you while that's doing. I'm going to finish the lemon and ginger. Okay. Okay. On this piece, those are the ends, like like if you were to cut a carrot almost envision that you know a carrot's a root also ginger's a root and there's the other side now it does have offshoots but um so you see the end is here the end is here so this is with the grain and then across the end would be across the grain so what you want to do is in a big piece like this you can split it two or three times since it's going in high speed blender and i'm not really going to be dicing it small i'm just going to split this once down the middle and then um, so see like that can you just set those orientate those on the board so you know you don't even have to look let's see which way the grain is going so uh, uh, sort of looks like lungs or like if you let's see if you and doesn't that look like sort of like lungs you know Ironically, ginger is awesome for the lungs and the respiratory system. <laughs> sort of like that walnut, how walnuts are good for the brain and the walnuts look like brains. Oh, yeah. The fingerprint is everywhere. I mean, oh, it looks like a couple of lungs there. It's pretty amazing looking. So basically, I'm just splitting it in half, each little segment uh, with the green. And um, really, you could split it with the grain. You could like sort of like julienne slice it. I could I could cut an additional cut here if I needed. It all depends on how fine you need your dices. Now, if you're going to add it to a recipe where you need the blending to be easier, you can dice it up as small as garlic. Um, you just really need to make sure you have a sharp knife with ginger because it's 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 a lot tougher. Well, it's it's kind of tough. It, it's it's fibrous, but it, it's probably about maybe four or five times the strength of a carrot, maybe more. I don't know, so there's there's your other lungs there. <laughs> I just think that's so cool. So if you are, if you have recently stopped smoking or you're ex-smoking or an ex-smoker, even if it's years, the ginger is gonna assist uh, the regeneration of your lungs. Uh, and I mean, that's just one facet. Ginger is also gonna help clean your blood and that's one way in which it will help your lungs. But um, that's another benefit of ginger is it will it is so beneficial for many of all the pretty much systems throughout the body but especially the respiratory system um, so uh, so what I'm gonna do is now I'm just gonna I'll just chop one up so basically I'll take this segment here and I'm, now what I'm gonna do now it's flat that's where I, so I'm gonna sit it on the flat side and I'm just gonna sort of like cut I don't know around the eighth of an inch down there. So basically julienne that uh, into four little pieces. Now I'm gonna lay that, now I'm gonna cut across the grain. And I'm make these little dices. And um, and all these little dices are gonna go in the, 
the blender the pitcher I'm gonna add those when I get done I'm just gonna pile them up right now but so you can see sort of the consistency of that that'll blend pretty easy in a food processor or really well in a Vitamix it will almost liquefy in a Vitamix you don't really have to cut these up as small if it's like a Vitamix um, but uh, my, my high-speed blender is not quite as powerful as a Vitamix it's close but so I'm just I'm cutting it up a little bit small just to show you really I wouldn't cut it up this small and these are the little pieces tips that I peeled you, just, you don't really need to cut those up at all um, with the Vitamix you don't really need to even strain this type of tea that I'm making the spice tea you don't you don't need to strain it because it just pulverizes the seeds and everything and the lemon the skin and everything but it's, it's kind of good to strain it uh, just makes it easier to drink Okay, so I'm going to just continue on uh, basically just dicing these remaining these remaining parts that you see here, and then I'll cut the lemon up. Tea still got, looks like 12 minutes to go on the second round of cool steeping. Oops. Okay, ground ginger added. Start on the lemons. Basically on the lemons you want to make sure and wash them real good. Uh, ideally with one of those uh, 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 coating type hygiene, I mean uh, eco friendly uh, uh, produce wash things or some, some distilled, I mean or some yeah, distilled vinegar and, and water just to make sure you got all the outside good to get any possible chemicals or sealants off there as best you can. You can scrub them but you can get too redundant so basically what I'm doing here is I'm just going to cut the little ends off and um, basically what I do next is I look for any what I think might be issues um, you know bad spots like there's a little rough spot on the lens or dark spots or you know take off any bruises or just little parts that's that's actually if you look there, it's yellow, and then there's oftentimes green and lemon, but that's okay. All right, so that one's done. So now what I'll do is, um, all right, that's the long way. There's the end, end. So basically, I'm just going to cut it in half across the green, like the end on, end on that side and on that side. Cut it in half. And now each one of these halves, I'm going to lay flat, and I'm just going to cut it into eighths. And there's in half. I'm going to cut it in the fourths. Now I'm going to cut each. I'm going to cut each one of these little fours and just go across. Now that's going to cut it into eighths. So what I have now is the lemon here cut into eight pieces. And I'll throw that in the blender with the ginger. Okay, lemon number two. need to have a sharp knife on this. The ginger will help you with your knife skills. I, I did a really nice uh, ginger segment in uh, Dandelion 101 uh, that covers in more detail how to start preparing the ginger. Alright, so I've got one lemon, or I got the ginger that we did earlier in the, in the pitcher blender, and I've got the one lemon, so I'm going to cut this one up. that half all right one lemon turned into 16 pieces okay uh, about five more minutes on the second uh, round of steeping uh, so that here's the blender here the two lemons uh, actually it's 32 little pieces of lemon from, from two lemons and there's the, uh, the ginger right there right there. There's where you can see a lot of it. All right, so it's just those ingredients there right now. So this blender pitcher looks really dirty, but most, a lot of it's uh, oxidation because I do do a lot of lemon, and the lemon will often cause this. Uh, I can do a detailed cleaning, but I just want to, I'm not, not using a dirty. I, I clean it after each use, but just not, I'm not uh, getting trying to get it immaculate. So basically that's just 
uh, from doing the lemons and ginger, but it will. But I just didn't want to alarm you there. So, um, but the nice thing with the lemon too in here, using the peel, is uh, a lot of that essential oil, citrus essential oil from the lemon essential oil in the skin is going to diffuse right into the liquid. And um, like I say, you can strain this. If I were using a Vitamix that would really fully pulverize all the seeds and uh, break it down a little bit more than this blender would do, I, I probably more more times than than others not strain it just to gain some fiber going through the system because um, that ginger is good fiber. I, you know, I, oftentimes I won't strain this one even though because I'm just used to looking out for any lemon seed fragments, which if you know you blend it a good bit, it, it, it'll do a good job on them. Okay, uh, a little bit more to go on the steeping and then we'll continue. Okay, second round of steeping complete. It's, try, it's time to strain. Uh, there's uh, my ginger peels and the little parts of the lemon that I cut off of the, uh, gin, the, the pieces that I cut off the ginger and the peels and then the lemon there. I'm gonna throw that on the, uh, I got a, collection of stuff that I put on the compost I got a barrel okay um, all right so it's ready to uh, strain now strainers because I had a, initially had a small one like this and it just wasn't conducive to the amount of tea that I'm making and it made it more time-consuming and difficult so I went ahead and got me one of these fine mesh uh, large size strainers so and then in the interim between those I was actually using sort of one in between the three that came with the uh, twin gear juicer I got and um, but this one I could I could see where it was also limiting as well and and I risked damaging this and I'll, I, I, don't, I didn't want to damage it since it went with the juicer and that I do use this sometimes with the juicer depending on what I'm juicing so and then you also a, a good thing to have to make it easier is a half gallon measuring cup now I think in the stores this will ultimately be sold as a, a batter uh, measuring cup or a cake cake batter measuring cup because it, you, it's so big but it's got um, well, as you can see there it's eight cups you want to look for the eight cup so I would invest in these two items they're really ideal to help you with tea um, I'm just not going to off into one of those so that's going to the compost all right so there we go I'm going to rinse that off in a little bit and um, so here's the remaining that we got so that it was right out about um, half a cup. It's got the Yerba Mate. Um, it's got the the green blend with the predominantly stinging nettles, 50%, 20% thyme, 20% 25% oregano. And then it had the lavender flowers on top. Um, so that's a very, very nutritious tea. There's a lot of minerals and um, cool stuff in this lot right here. Um, okay, I've got the tea fully strained. Uh, so this is that blend. Uh, it's gone through about 45 minutes of cooling down since it's since the since the start of the steep first steep process. So uh, here's the initial jar it was in. So basically, what I did is I took my uh, huge fine mess strainer, and um, this is a half gallon measuring cup, or often referred to as a cake batter cup. I highly recommend getting something like this, possibly with a cover. Uh, you can store stuff with it, but it's excellent for tea. And get a, you want to get you an oversized um, strainer, fine, sort of medium to fine mesh, not one of those really loose ones. So you want it to be able to filter out particulate, sort of like that. I don't know if you can see any of that particulate still on there. Um, so you want it, you, do, you don't want a real loose screen, but you don't want a real tight. So. But these function nice. If you can find one of these, I think I got this at Bed Bath & Beyond. Uh, it was sold separately, not as a set. This was just a separate piece. And see how nicely this fits? It just fits right on that footprint. And it's got the little protective thing in case it will slip off. You could actually put this something actually on a bigger pot 
but that just functions so nice. And then what you can do is imagine this had the drag still in there. You just pour it in there. And then with a bowl like this, once you pour some of this out, you can just press down, press down. And, and sort of press all the remaining liquid out of the dregs. I did try to show this as I was doing. I don't know if the video messed up. I might have to uh, edit or whatever. But um, so that's that's pretty much it. So this is the strain tea. It's starting to rain good. I'm gonna pause here and uh, go collect some rainwater, and I'll get back with you. Okay. So where were we? Uh, and whatever, however you flavor it, we'll, we'll, the tea will take on that uh, attribute as far as like uh, whatever that herb has to offer. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this, what you see here, to the high speed, high speed blender that has the ginger and lemons in it. And I'm going to blend that for about probably about 60 seconds on high and probably about another minute on low. Um, I am going to get a Vitamix as soon as I can because it'll do a better job and have less dwell time uh, of the metal hitting the stuff and of the heat. So, but this, this is sort of like in between. So this, this does do a good job. It's a ninja, but um, it, it also, it does really good on the uh, grinding the dry plants, but all right. So, I'm going to pour this in here. I usually don't go over 50 ounces or 40. 56 is about the max. So this little bit of tea, I'm just going to leave in the jar. And when I get finished blending this, I'll just pour this back in the jar. And then um, I'll probably going to add some cold spring water to just bring it up the temperature, refrigerate a little bit, and it'll be uh, done. All right, all right, I'm gonna blend. Okay, gonna start the blending process. Lid on there, I won't, I'm not gonna keep the whole, this thing's noisy. Kind of like an outboard motor going bad. <laughs> okay. All right, I'll be back with you. Okay, all blended up at this point. Uh, you could go one way or the other. You could choose to strain it, strain this. Uh, if this were a faster blender like a Vitamix, it wouldn't be that bad to drink, a little bit pulpy, but this is kind of pulpy. It, it doesn't do quite as well a job. I'm used to it, so I'm not gonna strain. So what I'm gonna do is add to, this is the leftover tea that I didn't put in here. So I'm just going to pour this now in, in there. So now this is the, the only thing I'm going to do now is add cold spring water to that. And I'm going to refrigerate it up, up a little bit to bring it, bring it, that temperature up, up a little bit, that lemon. All right. So. Okay, so there you have it. Um, I want to invest in some of those new lids. They supposedly got uh, non-BPA plastic composite lids with a silic silicone uh, on the inside um, that uh, are leak-proof for, for the standard mason jar. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll find those and I'll put a, a link on this on this video for those. I need, I need to get some of those too. So, but do, what I do right now is just to, these things by themselves will leak. Uh, so the only alternative, you could probably put some kind of real thin material over here and like that. But what's convenient is these, unfortunately, the outer the outer edge is metal. So, but here they have some kind of uh, like some kind of rubber. Thing. looks like they must might spray on it sort of like it sort of replaces the uh, rubber gaskets type thing so I just put one of those on 
Now I'm going to just put this in the refrigerator. Right now it's it's, uh, in, it's it's almost at room temperature. It's it's slightly above room temperature. So there you have it. The spiced lemon ginger blast speedball tea. Okay. And what you would do is you could it depends on on you could use this for several different things. Um, if you like a sweetener, you could go with some good quality, natural, all natural, non-processed stevia. There are certain healthy ones that have actual flavors. Um, I, I like the flavor of this, so I, I don't add any sugar to my teas at all. Uh, I've cut back, pretty much cut out all processed sugar, so I can actually taste the sugar in lemons. Um, so there you have it. And um, they're all kind of custom variations of this. You don't have to use the tea blend that I used. I mean, I'm gonna, the, the dried dandelion, for example, I'm gonna probably make a tea with some of the dandelion roots and, and the dandelion other plant parts, blend those, blend those together and make a tea out of that. Um, so there's all kind of stuff you can do. I just wanted to sort of show how I, I usually do the teas and, um, you know, this is considered a steep tea here. Now, if I were, if I had roots or harder barks and um, dried hard berries, that's where you want to go to the o other type of uh, tea preparation called decoction, where you actually, um, you also do that with some fresh evergreen stuff too, like fresh rosemary stuff that's not dried out, fresh pine, you know, and the barks and the roots and the hard dried berries, that's where you want to use decoction. And um, I think it was last year I made a, a short video about some of the basics on this type of brewing called uh, steeping or diffusion. And then also on this other method I'm talking to you about decoction. So teas are an awesome way to get a lot of uh, plant nutrition in. Um, they are a really good source of vitamin. And, you know, some of the experts are saying right now, it's... Now this is a very, very complex tea. It's almost like... <laughs> A lemon ginger uh, tea smoothie. I mean, because it—I mean, it, it's liquid, but you can see it's got some fiber in it, a little bit of fiber in there. But I'm going to dilute this out, so I'll pour like in a quart. I'll probably pour two thirds to three quarter of the quart full, and then I'll top that off with the cold spring water. So I do dilute this. I don't drink this full strength. You could, um, and I've done that before, but I usually want to dilute it some. Because it's a lot. I mean, so, you know, it's got a lot of energy in there. You, you saw, I, I used about, um, I think, nine or ten of these, this size scoops of the, of the, Yerba, of the San Mateo Yerba Mate. And um, this is the, the blend. I probably used about ten of these as well, ten scoops. And then um, the lavender, I, I think I used uh, about five scoops. So, but you can, you know, you may want to read about teas because there's some combinations out there that have been around for a long time that, that provide synergy. And the lemon, anytime you make a tea, usually if you add lemon, it's going to exponentially increase the amount of the healthy stuff or antioxidants in the tea that your body, that your GI tract can absorb. There's something about the chemical reaction of the, I believe it's the citric acid in the lemon with some of the bioflavonoids and antioxidants in the tea. It just helps it. It, it just makes it, it makes it more absorbable when those, when they, when that's, when that lemon uh, molecules or sub molecules bond with the, uh, the uh, plant, uh, uh, you know the antioxidant molecules within the solution of the tea. It's it's a synergy that is dramatic, and I've heard that usually, depending, I mean, on average, 30 times more absorption of the healthy constituents in a tea just by pairing lemon with it. So, lemon provides an ultimate synergy to any type of tea you're making. And I guess that's why it's been so common throughout history, but they scientifically have been able to prove uh, that. But roughly about 30 times more absorption. For example, if you're, if you're drinking green tea, you're going you're gonna to, on average, 
if you pair it with lemon, you're going to you're going to be able to absorb 30 times more of the healthy constituents like the EECG or whatever it's called, the theanine or whatever. You're going to be able to absorb about 30 times more than you would if you didn't have a lemon. So lemon is in the last probably close to eight years, I've never made tea without lemon. Now, there are certain sun teas that I'll make um, where I may not add lemon, but I'll usually add it to another tea, like Chaparral. I'll usually add that to another tea that's already got lemon, or sometimes I'll drink that by itself, or I'll just add lemon juice to a little bit of that diluted. But um, teas, are, teas are really an excellent way. And like I said, going back to what I was saying, some of the experts are saying that it's actually, this is where I got on the lemon, the lemon rant. It's actually more beneficial for you to drink herbal tea than it is plain water because the tea actually structures the water and um, it actually is an excellent way, an excellent source of vitamins and minerals uh, in, a, in a more of a natural ionic form. I mean, easier absorbed than like a multivitamin, unless it's probably a whole food vitamin, but teas are an excellent way to get minerals into the body. Calcium, magnesium, um, they're one of the best ways um, I'll, you know, juicing is good too, but teas are probably the next best way, or if not equivalent to, because teas, I mean, uh, I really, these, these have really helped me teas have in, in, in my journey. Okay, so I'm going to chill, put this on ice, and I'm going to fix me a nice spiced glass of tea, or, or quart of tea, within moments. Okay. Okay, ready to pour up that glass. Here it is. It's, it's not fully chilled yet. I'm just shaking it up so any sediment that's all mixed up in the solution, so I'll shake it and loosen that tight. I'm going to pour rapidly up to about right there. So that's how much I've used. I'm going to go a little more. So that's about a third of it. All right, I'm put that back in the fridge. Now at this point, you could add more water to this and chill that and already have a 25% uh, water dilution. Uh, I'm gonna leave it at full strength for right now because I want it to cool faster. Adding cold water will help that cool faster, so I'm gonna go ahead and do it. That way I won't have to, I might drink the rest of this full. Okay, so I'm just gonna add that. So that's another way you can dilute it. This is probably just right to drink. Or you can further dilute that, whatever your taste is. Alright, so I'm going to put that back in the fridge to let it keep chilling a little bit. And then I'm going to add a cup of water to this one. Alright, so that one's ready. Alright, cheers. Now, oh, that's that's great. I can taste the um. What is it? That? Mm, what was that? There's something I taste that I can't describe, but it's it's it's, it's very very good. Um, oh, it's the lavender. Um, Cause usually I only put lavender with hibiscus, and this is the sort of the first time. That adds a a major depth, nice overtone to this tea that lavender did. Excellent, and that's going to be the calming effect for the relaxation. And then um, the yerba mate, which is going to get be the the uh, just the uh, basically a time released good wave of energy. Off the it's not going to it's not going to stress you out like processed coffee beans coffee made with those it's not gonna it's not gonna you won't crash with your mate at least not that i've never known anybody to it's like a slightly different alkaloid than the damaged uh heated coffee caffeine that's in the processed caffeine the processed caffeine that is, is bad the thing with the yerba it's not processed and it's slightly different it's not as uh, stressful on the system as far as um acidity 
um, and um, crashing your adrenals. So uh, usually the yerba mate, if you don't abuse it, it's, it's adrenal friendly usually. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, uh, there's, you can just, this basically I did show you one of the examples that I would do. I mean, I have a lot of different other teas that I make, but just seeing all this, I'm sure gives you plenty of ideas what you can do with teas. They're very versatile, tremendously healthy. You should incorporate them in, in, in as best you can because they are so beneficial. Like I say, one of the best ways for minerals and, 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 and vitamins and minerals. Okay. Okay, here's one more uh, thing that I forgot to mention. I'll probably insert this somewhere in the video, but um, even if you have a Vitamix that will fully pulverize the solution, you can rough blend it. Uh, you want to blend it up so it's liquid sort of like this. I wouldn't let it be any thicker than that, but and then you can, by doing that, you can then let it steep with the lemon and ginger in there for a while and then strain it. Um, which would actually, now if you, if you pulverized it with the Vitamix and got it uh, with all of the um, dregs out of here, the ginger particles and the lemon particles, then um, you could just strain it. I mean, because well, most of that stuff's diffused into the liquid, but like if you, like in this particular case, um, due to the, the blender not being as, uh, as efficient as possible, you got little particles in there, so you could let that, you could either drink it as is, which is what I'm going to do because I'm used to it, and that just adds fiber. And as, as, as these particles go through the GI tract, they're going to continue to, at the heat, the acids from the stomach, they're going to continue to leach and, and release their beneficial things. So um, I don't mind drinking like this, but you could let it sit here as it was chilling or so let it sit on the counter room temperature and let the ginger and lemon continue to leach into there from the little from the little pieces. It's not gonna be you could probably add maybe a little bit more soleil salt, which I'm gonna add some soleil salt to that. And um, there's one last step I'm gonna add what, what I want to show you on this what you can do too with any tea. Be right back. Okay this would be my final uh, step to uh, add to the tea. And this is what I usually do, at least with my first quart of tea that I have on any particular day. I've got some spices here too, but uh, that's some ground cayenne. I believe this is 70,000 heat or 90,000 Scoville heat units. Uh, so I put um, not a whole one of those scoops, but probably three quarters full. That's cayenne. And um, I basically put the cayenne in at this stage because I didn't want it. I didn't want the heat to destroy it. And so here's the turmeric. Same thing with it. The heat would have damaged this. So this is a ground organic turmeric. This is organic. And so I'm going to put in about a full scoop of that. Now. When I refill this, there'll probably be a little bit of drag to these spices. They'll mix up, that lemon's going to help dissolve a little bit of it, but there'll be dregs, and so I'll, I won't dump that out. I'll just keep adding, and then that'll all continue to infuse in the tea as I drink it. So that's how you can use the ground spices, not just as a tea blend or on its own. You can also add the, the sort of volatile spices where, with the heat, where the heat would damage them to, to your actual tea. And then you just sort of just put your, put your lid on, shake that up, and you'll see it get a light, a little orange. I'll show you the color difference. That turmeric is going to make it a little bit orange, and the, like a, a red orange from the cayenne, the red cayenne, reddish orange cayenne, and the uh, turmeric. All right, so you can see the difference. See how much oranger this one is. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a little bit more water to top 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 that dilution off, and this is how I would usually drink. Uh, the lemon blast tea, I call it. Well, it's the, I call it, what did we say we we're going to call it? The spiced, the lemon ginger, no, the spiced lemon ginger blast speedball tea. 
the spiced lemon ginger blast speedball tea. There you go. All right, had fun doing this. Hope 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 y'all learned some about how versatile teas are, and hopefully it give y'all some ideas. Highly functional in a healthy lifestyle. These teas are a good way to get the medicinal properties of spices and herbs and, and, and heirloom plants into your body. A very, very nice way. Okay. Tea Blast 101. Tea Blast 101. Tea Blast 101.